Welcome everyone. This is BRML Final Assault Season 1, Week 2. Got some new maps this week, and we got some good audio, and hopefully no bugs. Let's see. Uh, so this is our, I believe, first cast game of the week. We have Beastrick versus Dalkavis. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. And uh, we have both players uh, just deciding to use tank divisions. We have Beastrick on the U.S. Beaumont uh, tank division, and we have Dalkavis on the German tank division, known as Wolf. We already see both uh, characters are already spewing out their tanks, as they are expected to do with their low um, $6 rate. Wolf, as well, has a tank and artillery uh, heading up to that hill to get some more coverage and more some free pot shots onto the artillery in case... Uh, to get that early push early on. Got to be a little more careful. You can see he's microwing, uh, microwing the artillery away from the lane to make sure the artillery don't take pot shots on it. Uh, meanwhile, we also see Beastrick as a tank over there is trying to microwave it away. He does not want to get some free damage from the artillery, but is going to target the artillery because it only takes two tank shots and he will definitely uh, be able to take this artillery out if he microwaves well enough. And if uh, Dal does not see this coming but he does see it coming and uh now uh Beastrix tanks are getting wiped out by a single tank in the lane it does take one shot the artillery oh the artillery oh the artillery just manages to die at the same time that the tank dies so it's definitely worth uh for Beastrix to or for, I should say for um yeah Beastrix to take that uh artillery out well, on the other side of the map, we see we have a lot more map control going on. We have a tank on the other uh, point. We have uh, the player blocking me. And we also have a jeep just stationed in the middle as well. So Beast are trying to make sure that when that first crate drop does uh, drop, we do see a little bit more uh, control. Another way to gain control is with these ATG guns. Uh, if you put one carelessly in lane, it should easily stop this tank push right here. Tank does get one shot on it, which is not ideal. Uh, infantry will also do quite a bit of damage to it, so this uh, in-lane ATG gun might die pretty soon here if it uh, grabs the attention of any of these infantry in-lane. This is a very good spot for the artillery here uh, by Dal. Uh, definitely a very annoying spot for Beastrick until he gets a uh, maybe a jeep or a couple tanks up onto this hold. Or defensive artillery, but uh, usually it's kind of dangerous to use an artillery defensively, move it up um, in range to attack this. But we are seeing some unit uh, be dragged out. It looks like it is the Jeep, as I said first, um, is trying to come out. It has to get through this infantry first and will not be able to do so. So until, um, I mean, until Beastr takes out this thing, this tower will eventually go down. We're seeing a nice cannon shot here. Of the artillery just slowly. I mean, it's not only just taking out this, these towers, but it's also taking out any infantry that come out of the base. We are seeing the double artillery. To, I'm guessing draw aggro from one and then uh, easily take out that uh, artillery from the range that it needs to do so. So, uh, one for one trade of artillery. And uh, it's good for Beastrick. Gives him some more uh, breathing room. And uh, will allow him to keep pushing in lane with that artillery. He does have place in lane. Go to take a look on this other lane to make sure nothing interesting is happening. Uh, we just see a lot of ATGs being put in lane by Beastrick. Usually players do not do this, but I guess due to the fact that this map does not have very many flat zones, the lanes kind of are the flat zones for this map. Uh, Beastrick also sent a couple tanks to regain control of this X marker uh, for any loot drops at me. In the future, spawn at this location and does take out the tanks. We are finally seeing a uh, tier 3 unit from Dal. The... Uh, the Walking Stuka artillery trucks. Very damaging and uh, very good on this map. There's a lot of hills, a lot of ridges, a lot of rocks that uh, block all these uh, units, like the tanks. The tank will not be able to shoot this unit effectively unless it's uh, the uh, artillery truck is poorly microed. So that tank goes down and that is minus $6 um, and the artillery truck still up with a lot of health. We have one in lane as well, so uh, this lane will definitely push very fast. But I mean, it's, I, I was speaking earlier how uh, the artillery units on this map are very good, and we have already the, the first Calliope uh, coming out from Beastrick. This has a lot more range than the artillery trucks and uh, quite a bit more damage, so we'll probably see these uh, artillery trucks. This one's going down for sure. 
Yep, already blown up with the Calliope taking barely any damage. And he's just sending them straight mid. Uh, it backs it up to allow him to, the Calliope to fight against this, uh, these Jeeps, that, or I should say motorcycles that are coming out. Fight against these ATGs and Calliopes. Jeeps are pretty good against both units. Um, more so the ATG than the Calliope. Calliope can easily uh, fire upon the Jeeps if he micros them back close enough. Uh, Dao is also trying to, again, continue trying to deal with this ATG and uh, Calliope in the center. Uh, he knows he needs to deal with this because the center of this map, especially with these art, uh, heavy artillery units from both sides, the center is very important. allows uh, pretty much control of every uh, crate drop except for this one over here. Again, uh, another ATG in the lane just slowly pushing itself. Um, it'll be kind of dangerous but now that there's this, uh, this walking Stuka walking up onto it. But uh, uh, Beastrick is making it micro backwards out of the lane. Um, will it be enough? Dal notices that he will probably target the ATG, which I see his marker doing right now. Now takes some free damage and free pot shots um, with little to no damage, except for the infantry that he needs to be careful right now because they are. It is taking a lot of damage from the infantry. He does take down the ATG, but uh, the, the Walking Stuka does take damage as well. You know, on the mid, we had something blow up here. Um, not really sure what it was, probably an ATG. We did see that one ATG earlier did get blown up by something, probably Walking Stuka or uh, more tanks. Um, Dahl just really enjoys going straight through the mid with these tanks, which is a very good uh, strategy for a tank division. There's no infantry to allow any pushing. Of course, that tank does not really get to do much. Uh, this Calliope is close to dying, though. Oof. And it died uh, last minute by a Walking Stuka blast. Uh, they took each other out, but it's a lot... Probably a lot more uh, worth for Dao to take out the Calliope than it is for Beastrick to take out the Walking Stuka. Huge difference in cost, almost double the cost of the Walking Stuka. Very nice placement of this Walking Stuka here. Uh, you can kind of see the, the difference of range, especially um, of the Calliope and Walking Stuka. Even though it's in a, such a good spot behind this ridge here, not able to fire upon the HEG that is just clearly trying to push upon the lane and these tanks. So once they get a little closer, it will be able to fire upon it. But for now, um, Beastrick is just sending that tank into that ridge to sort of allow the uh, artillery to, or force the artillery truck, I should say, to get back. But oh, almost got killed by that single tank. That would have not been ideal for sure. So, we have an audio issue here. Had audio a minute ago. I don't really know why I don't have audio now. Yeah, I didn't even alt tab this time, so that's a little, little bizarre. So, yeah, sorry about the audio. I don't know really why that's happening. Okay, some audio cues are playing, so it's just the game audio died uh, without me all tabbing, so. Sorry about that. Uh, Calliope is in a very good place to easily keep this lane defended. I mean, you can see the troops and the tanks are pushing very heavily. Meanwhile, on the other side, kind of the opposite story. Uh, a lot of more blue units pushing on this side, and not much defense except the ATG and single artillery. Uh, it would be cool to see another artillery perch on this uh, ridge. Maybe a walking Stuka this time. It's a lot more dangerous because there is this uh, defensive Calliope in the middle as well. So we see two Calliopes uh, heavily gaining map control. First Tiger tank of the game is coming out um, right here. It will easily blast through anything in its pass. I mean, you can already see uh, there was a tank there, and now it just disappeared without much uh, to show for. Double Calliope on this hill. Uh, they're focused on the single normal tank, which is probably not the best, uh, maybe. We'll take it out, and now they'll be able to focus on this tiger tank that is blasting through this lane. You need to protect them. Game audio tried to streak. Oh no. Yep, as I said here, the Calliope is now locking onto this lane, and uh, the tank will take some free damage. However, look at this. Very nice timing of these uh, normal tank here. It's going to take out this Calliope very easily. Maybe not. It is a... Is, uh, but, I mean, it did take a lot of damage. A single tank uh, taking out a Calliope like this is just super bad. Four times the cost of a tank. So even if you spend two tanks to kill a Calliope, that's 
Uh, you still got twelve more dollars uh, in your bank than the other player. Tiger has had basically zero damage done to it. It is almost close to the lane. Also, we had a crate drop, and it looks like it is spawned here next to this Calliope. So that is a good uh, amount of money we're about to see for Beastrick. So he did get it. He has four Calliopes already out on the field. And now that uh, with that crate drop, he spawned a fifth one. So huge amount of Calliopes all over the place. Wondering, uh, yeah, he's already sending them all down the middle base here. I mean, it's hard. Let's, let's, let's do a nice aerial view here. So we have the Tager tank trying to push on uh, Beastrix base, but we have all these Calliopes, which probably do much better um, in terms of base damage, focusing on Dial's base. Looks like one of them did go down. With just a purely just the single uh, regular artillery took one down. There's only one left, and it's not very much health left, I do believe. Less than half. So, uh, I mean, Beastrick took out a lot of towers while this Calliope is only one left on Dow's side. And meanwhile, that Tiger tank that finally made its way with full health over here didn't really get anything. Barely some tower damage. Uh, ATG and lane probably took out a lot. It's might as well this defensive Calliope. So this is a rough game, um, looking to be a rough game for Dow. Infantry did take, uh, is walking into his base, is taking out this last strand of infantry that spawned from the barracks, took out a troop truck. I what Dow's going to do to defend this. He is sending out tanks, but this might be too late. Once his uh, other Calliopes make this way over to the field to focus on the base, there's probably not much Dow will be able to do to defend against this. That has a lot of infantry too for a uh, uh, armored division. We're going to need your assistance, Commander. The base is under attack. They're finally focusing on the, 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 t the base itself. He just sends out a couple tanks, but they're probably not going to do much. Calliopes uh, are making their way, as well as an ATG taking long-range shots at the base as well. Not looking good. Artillery is doing a lot more damage against the uh, art the infantry running into the base than those tanks were. But, I mean, that thing will be taken out very soon. Are you aware that the enemy is and the Calliope is locked on the base. This will do it for game one of this series. Your calculations must have been off, Commander. I actually really enjoyed this series. There's a lot of um back and forth between two armor divisions. I haven't seen Dahl play before this, but he played very well. Uh, did a lot of good micro and a lot of uh, good placement of uh, his units. Uh, this is another game where I see like a Tiger Tank not really being as worth as the Walking Stuka. It's just based on my um, observations. I feel like the Tiger Tanks are just not... Very good a lot of times, especially against these other uh, U.S. Armored Tank Divisions. So we'll go uh, get into our next game as soon as possible. Hope we have no audio bugs. I'd rather have audio bug than uh, other Observer bugs, though. So I'll take it. Try and exit. All right, let me exit the game. There we go. So yeah, as I said, uh, week two, Beastrick is now one up, one ahead. Into our next game, the next map will be a very large map that will be very terrifying. Oh, I think my my observer mode just my game just crashed. Hold up. All right, um, lobby will be up in a minute. My uh, game just crashed. So give me a moment. Yeah, I can see uh I can see Dahl doing a much better with maybe a different uh maybe the more US armor division. I feel uh Wolf in, in itself is just very very uh neutered right now without all of his units. And I just think the tiger is just not very good. 
way too slow. I feel like all the best wolf players right now are just focusing on spamming walking sukas and overwhelming uh, with all that artillery presence. So I am about to launch the next uh, game with the map.
I'm sorry about that. I, there's always gotta be one issue, right? I've been saying a lot, but I'm mostly saying that uh, ATGs on this map are a lot more important than Calliope's on the last map, and you can see that Beastrick is focusing on that. Uh, Dahl has been tried multiple times to take them out from the air, but now that these are ground at AR station in this lo defensive location, it's uh, very difficult for Dahl to pretty much push at this point. Maybe at this point it would be a good idea for Dahl to spend more money on infantry? Maybe? Possibly? But even then, uh, if he does that, the Calliopes will eventually come out, as uh, one is finally coming out just now, I believe out of the garage. And uh, those are very- oh, nope, not even out of the garage, it's right in the middle of right here, and those are very good taking out infantry as well. We're seeing a couple of uh, artilleries trying to come out to allow more pushing, uh, do some damage on this ATG, but once the Calliope locks onto them, uh, they will not survive very long. The greatest defense will eventually become probably the best offense, as you can see here. Uh, Beastrick focused more on his defense, and as time goes on, he will be able to build more Calliopes and more stuff like that. Uh, we are seeing the first tank destroyer from Dahl. Very good unit. Maybe better to stack on a map like this, especially against all these ATGs, but we'll see how he handles this. Uh, my fears have been answered. The two artillery that were originally here tried to pushing the lane, just were taken out easily by the single Calliope. Tank Destroyer about to make its way to where it can start taking shots onto uh, armor. He is trying to focus it more... Yep, he's trying to keep it in lane while having the tank on the side lane. Calliopes... I think they have about the same amount of range as Tank Destroyers. Obviously, a line of sight is a lot better <laughs> for a Calliope. They don't have to actually get a line of sight. Uh, are still taking out dive bombers. Not very... I mean, that's an expensive unit to lose. Great drop here. Any person can get it. Looks like uh, Beastrix is already setting a unit down this way to get it. Meanwhile, uh, Tank Destroyer and Tank is going down this side lane. You can see in the top middle of my screen. Uh, Dahl actually does get that crate. Probably hope to see more tank destroyers with that uh, amount of money spent. His first tank destroyer is finally destroyed because they got in range of the ATGs, which is <laughs> not the best situation. Yeah, Beastrick really likes putting ATGs in the lane, even uh, without much uh, anti infantry support. He has that Calliope kind of just sitting there. Can't easily push infantry as I said earlier, but I mean, it's I guess it's pretty neat because purely the fact that auto lock onto his artillery that's going to try to like, push the artillery, uh, the infantry even more. And as we can see here, uh, players did find out that the German artillery, for whatever reason, only die uh, die in two shots from ATGs rather than one. So that's pretty bizarre to me. Uh, U.S. for example, their artillery actually dies by one shot of ATG right away. Well, that's a Pretty interesting uh, difference. Oh, but look at the infantry over on the other lane. What? What happened? Gallant is an infantry uh, infantry division, but Beastrick being armor division, somehow infantry uh, crawling up into the base. We are seeing a couple uh, motorcycles trying to take out the uh, ATG. We'll do so very successfully. But what is he going to do about this uh, infantry inside his base? Couple tanks, defensive tanks. I mean, they're already taking shots on the base. This is two times where we see infantry kind of doing the most damage to the base at the end of the game rather than the actual armor. That both uh, pretty well suited armor divisions and uh, our ground divisions have. Calliope. I mean, this is like a repeat right here, right? Infantry in the base while Calliope comes in and starts locking onto everything else. Uh, this is very hard for Dahl to come back, I do believe. Both lanes are just flow with infantry, and I think this might be game. Probably hope he's not even focusing on the base yet, it's purely on the towers. And that is a uh, artillery barrage coming from Beastrick. We'll probably take out the last of all defensive units in the base. That is a very successful uh, infantry barrage. Artillery barrage, I should say. Took out literally everything except the single tank. Yeah, I think uh, Dahl is about to give up right here. He looks like he's on the 
the last leg and is uh, accepting what's happening right here. So this will end game two of uh, Dalkovis versus Beastrick. Again, I hope I'm saying his name the best I can. Um, but we are 2-0. We still will play the third game for MMR purposes. So let's get us right to that in just a moment. I was pretty close with the name. The H threw me off though. Darok, Darok. Oh god, that's actually harder to say. Oh god, that's gonna make my my tongue uh my tongue sweat a little bit. All right, so we are currently loading the next uh, the final match. This uh, map will be a very different map than what we previously had. Very tiny map. Dalk, this how this Dalk of this. Let players the lobby's up. Lobby is up. It took you a few years to get right. Yeah, it'll take me about the probably about the same amount of time. We're just waiting for one player to get right back into this lobby and we'll start the final game. I do believe we also have another series right after this. I'm not sure if I'm... I'm probably going to... I might cast it, too. So, um... Yeah, Beastrick has a literally a repeat series right after this against, uh... Let's see. I guess uh, against Axis Mund. I would probably uh, cast that right after these set of matches. Still waiting. Let me see if he's having issues. Uh, lobby is up. I find it. Still waiting for the last player. Let's check the standings for both these players. Um, I know Beastrick, he's been in the game for a couple months now. Familiar with his name. Doll is new. I'm gonna see how uh they're both they're standing currently after week one and uh you just kind of started, so I'm just curious as played recently. Yeah, we're waiting for Beastrick to get into the lobby. Yeah, we're waiting for Beastrick to get into the lobby right now. He's currently not in. I don't know if he can see it or not. Bo, oh, okay. Um, I'm going to remake lobby then, guys. Okay, new lobby should be up now. Okay, you guys are both good this time. Thank you. Good luck. All right, we are good. So this is on uh, St. Ulrich's, a very small map compared to what we've already played.
Come on, respawn. Oh, thank God. Whew, that was scary. Get ready. Three, two, one. Go. All right. We're good to go. So, uh, Beastrick is actually the highest in the standings currently for the Europe, uh, Europe division. Again, uh, I mean, he's strong with his, uh, Beaumont, so he's sticking with it. We're seeing Donald, uh, Darkvist, Darkvist, come, uh, back with the Wolf. So, double, uh, Armor Division Mirror match this time, and, <laughs> and it's obvious, both, uh, sending out tanks to the middle. This middle location is very important. Uh, whoever has the artillery in the middle usually has the lane presence as well. And we're having armor, we're having sound issues again. Which, again, I did not alt tab or anything. So, whoops. Uh, Dalvis, Dalvis, alright. Dalkavis, Dalkavis, Dalkavis. Anyway, yes, uh, so, again, we're having a sound bug, but at least I'm talking this time, so... We're not gonna have a perfectly casted game today in this series, but maybe the one after we'll have more luck. <laughs> Alright. So, currently, it looks like Beastrick, uh, has a lot more units in the middle. Uh, Dalkvis is has this artillery here, already took one shot from a defensive artillery. And Beastrick already got a crate, despite me not hearing it at all coming. Did get the first crate, so uh, very, very nice with the money. I mean, oh, we already see the first ATG as well from Beastrick. Uh, this is a pretty good ATG map too. It's a very small map, so it'll easily get uh, to be able to target towers if it's placed in the right uh, direction. Which you can see right here is, I mean, look how far that tower seems. But ATG, once it has nothing else to shoot at, will shoot at that tower for free. And we don't even, this is, but, but, I don't think that was the win. maybe you don't need HEG sometimes. The pure, the pure presence of these tanks in lane with this HEG that's not placing, is trying to place the best it can, spinning around right, baby, right round, and blows up. Oh, that's unfortunate. But, I mean, tanks are going to keep pushing and keep doing a lot of damage onto Beastrix Towers. Oh, I'm sure he's not very happy about that ATG. But even if it was placed, I'm pretty sure those tanks would have taken it out, so... Probably gonna see another defensive ATG, but placed into the base this time. But that, that tower is down. Surprising, the first two towers actually, uh, down are on Beastrick's side. Of course, the ATG is now placed in the base, and, uh, without dealing with that, you're not gonna really do much. That was also, uh, completely taking control of the middle. Gives him a lot more breathing room. I mean, and now he's doing the same thing with the right lane. It'd be interesting if he uh, made the timing of both lanes of the double tank that he's been doing at the same time to allow the uh, ATG to not really be able to focus on both lanes at the same time. We are seeing two artillery uh, taking free shots onto whatever they want. Right now it's this poor tank that's about to die very easily. Third artillery as well. He's trying to send out jeeps, but he's got defensive tanks that Red Jeeps very easily, so he's got the perfect setup right here in the middle. Alright, and look at that. Donald's gonna get another free crate. I, I think it's pretty interesting how, um, even though he has all these units in the middle, he still sends out Jeeps just for the heck of it. Um, in the middle, I guess he just already spawned them when he hears the plane drops and you can't you can't undo that uh, we already see the uh the artillery are just as i said in the beginning of the game whoever has control of the middle with artillery is going to do very well i'm guessing we're going to see a uh save for a calliope by beastrick very soon here i think that's what he's doing you've not seen anything come out from him and that Calliope will be able to do some immense damage once it comes out. I think we're going to see it right here. Here it comes. We're seeing the first walking Stuka, but I don't... I don't know. This looks this looks like the perfect situation for the Calliope once it locks on. We're going to probably see some panic micros very soon here from Dal. Calliope is kind of focused defensively right now onto these uh, our infantry. So allowed Dal to notice, wait, I better move these guys. And here they come. 
The barrage of hell takes out one artillery. But that's kind of it. He already moved his units, and now the the Calliope was to have to choose and decide what it wants to shot fire at. Dahl's playing this very well with uh, how he's grouping his units too. Not just he didn't just panic, uh, send them out in different directions. He has two tanks, one artillery, the best combination for defending the single artillery, two uh, fire bullets. That tank it did take a pot shot at that uh, Calliope as well. So it only takes one more shot, uh, pot, sh pot shot of a tank to take out the, the Calliope fully, but we have the second one coming out. This is not good. We might see a comeback from uh, Beastrick just purely do this one unit. He did, though, put that Calliope in a very dangerous spot, and I think that might have been game losing, actually. No reason to put the Calliope outside the base so heavily when you have all these walking Sukas and tanks in the middle. The range of the Calliope alone allows it to fire from a farther distance. I'm pretty sure that was just more of a panic micro than anything. And that is the final tower down from Beastrick. We're gonna send these uh, Stukas in, take out hopefully these ATGs first. ATGs, as you might be able to notice, don't do as much damage against these Stukas as they do tanks. And they require the, uh, the Calliope to fire upon them as well. Wow, he did actually defend successfully though. There are no more red units in the middle. And he only has the basic tanks in lanes. So this hopefully will give some time for Beastrick to respawn. Look how low that Calliope's health is. Literally, uh, one stray bullet from infantry we should be able to take this guy out. Alright, so we got the Walking Stuka out. Kind of bombarding infantry, and we have a single artillery coming out as well. But it's going to get demolished by this Calliope. It's not even going to barely fire. See it, and now you don't. All right, we're starting to see HGGs outside the base yet again since the beginning. Seeing a couple walking stukas, more than one is definitely better. Kind of matches the damage of Calliope the more uh, walking stukas you have. And we have a crate right here. No one's gotten it. No one's even... All right, Beastrick is going to get that as well with this tank. Uh, I think Dal just didn't see it. I'll move it up just a tiny bit, and there he goes. See what he does with that money. He uh, built another ATG. He has five ATG, most of them in his base, but now he is as, uh, spreading them out. Putting them very far, close to Dahl's base. Purely to allow his infantry to push against tanks. And probably take sh uh, shots onto the tower after that. That, uh, that tank is very low health. Probably about to die pretty soon there. Got shot by another tank. Not seeing a complete mirror of what happened earlier. Um, he was so close for Dahl to finish out on Beastrick. He has no towers, but we're starting to see Beastrick now on the offensive pretty heavily. And he hasn't even gotten a Calliope on this side. He is setting one right now, uh, but at the same time, that crate is dropping. Looks like it's going to drop at the same place it dropped before, so Beastrick still has that tank parked there from earlier uh, when he originally grabbed that. Oh, wait, no, it's not. That shadow confused me. No one's got this, actually. You see, uh, Beastrick is sending out a jeep right now. And looks like he will probably even be able to get that. And what does he buy with it? A second Calliope. But at the same time, he also spent money on ATG, so he's got two very strong units coming out kind of around the same time. Calliope is in the middle, is now taking shots. On the lane, infantry will take shots on the tank and probably the tower after that. This tower, sne just sneeze on this tower and it will go down. We're starting to see some, uh, exactly why ATGs are not just strong on these flat large maps, but they're also strong on these small maps too, really. The worth of ATGs are just pretty strong, um, when you think about it. I mean, they just have so much range, they come with a free jeep, and they do a lot of damage.
Single tank trying to take uh, take out this Calliope. Doesn't really, almost gets it to half health, but I mean, there's ATGs all over the place now. Alright, we're seeing a offensive barrage from Beastrick onto Dahl. Takes out a couple troop trucks, a couple tanks, and the rest of his towers. He has, both players now have zero towers. Unbelievable. Turn to my games where uh, towers kind of slowly get taken down over time by grinding, uh, grinding them down. Both these armor divisions just quickly take them out, just super fast with these high-powered tank units. And this might be it. I mean, we have all these Kaliopes out the base, all these ATGs. There's not much that Dahl can do to respawn them. Unbelievable. Unbelievable turnaround here. Kind of goes back to my point where I just think Wolf does not win games unless you finish super early. And even so, against the U.S. Beaumont division, it's really hard to even finish early. When I mean, all Beastrick did was place a couple ATGs defensively in his base, and all the armor that Dahl was trying to send into his base just easily got shredded. And now that, I mean, game's over. Calliope is just focused on the base like last uh, couple games, and that's it. So we are seeing... Uh, we just saw a 3-0 victory of uh, Beastrick against Dahl. I still think Dahl did very well, though. Um, I'm, like I said, this was like the first time me actually watching him play. He's got the micro down. Apparently, he does not have many hours in this game. So he's going to be a very scary player. Um, curious if he will try it again. As I said the first game, we'll try the uh, U.S. Beaumont division. Uh, Wolf will be buffed eventually when they add his final unit. Wolf is missing a single unit. That makes him seem a little weaker than the other ones. But uh, yeah, he did very good with what he had. So congr uh, congrats, Beastrick. I think he's currently unde unde undefeated now uh, in the Europe division. So very good. Uh, also, if you want to stick around in about 10 minutes or so, we are going to have Beastrick play against his other uh, three matches against Axis. So if you're interested in that, we will be uh, we will be going to a splash screen for about five to seven minutes, and uh, we'll see more uh, Beastrick action. So stay tuned.
Just a quick update. Uh, we are still checking on. We're still checking on Axis. He uh, had a scheduled match. It was a little more flexible than most scheduled matches in the league, but um, it was supposed to be around 2 p.m. We're still waiting on at least a reply. So um, please bear with us. We are trying to get this game casted. I'm trying, I'm trying to get as many games cast as possible, honestly. Um, and I think like he might be checking notification right now. So we'll, we'll uh, I'll give you another update in about two minutes. Stuttering audio. Oh, fixed. Okay. Okay, player is ready. So we'll be able to start this like almost right on time. Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create the lobby since he is. Lobby is up. All right, so we're good. Um, to pretty much start in a couple minutes. We got the lobby up, waiting for players to join in, and once they join in, we'll start the series right away. Casted by me, your best caster in the league. Probably just starting up his game, but then we'll be good. Uh, first match as the last series will be on Curvid Pass. Big snow map with a lot of ridges, a lot of problems. Maybe not for these players though. Uh, this map actually I, it's just there for me pretty nice for um planes <laughs> so I guess that's why I like it Just waiting on one more player. It is scary though, um, early game, and players like to do a lot of stuff through the middle. Rush tanks, like we saw in our first series, a lot of that was happening, I believe. And that always scares me. But other than that, the map is good. I do like it.
still waiting on the last player. I'm sure they're working on it. In Discord. Uh, maybe he can't get into our Discord channel. He's in general, too, so. He, we, come on. I don't know if he gets things. Lobby is up. Axis, we're just waiting on you. No pressure. Oh, gotcha. That's fine. High pressure. All the pressure. Yeah, if you can't see it for some reason, just let me know. Patch on the veil. All right, I'm gonna remake the lobby then. All right, new lobby should be up now. Worst case scenario, I just remake it again. <laughs> I'm just gonna remake the lobby one more time. Okay, new lobby should be up. Try yeah, I would re I would restart your game at this point.
See the lobby? Or make it one more time. Um, I don't know. Maybe. All right, there we go. All right, we're good. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, it said you were in. Hmm. Huh. Maybe you guys will just have to play without the, the casting stuff because I don't know why it's, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't really, uh, I haven't, I haven't ran into this bug before. Nothing can really know. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna let you guys, um, handle it. Sorry. Right, have a good game. Uh, the maps are Corvid Pass, Maginot, and um, uh, uh, Saint Works. Sorry. Good luck, guys. All right, sorry about that, guys. Um, I don't know what Axis just could not get it going. Um, he was, I, I did my best. <laughs> Um, sorry for making you guys wait for really nothing happening. I uh, thought we were going to get a game. I thought we were close at the end there, but... My, is my uh, mic popping again? Anyway, um, I think we have games later tonight that are very much more... Um, you might enjoy, especially if you're in the U.S. East. We have Newman versus Photo at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. I'll be casting that match because uh, I'll really enjoy casting that match. Those guys are very close friends, and it's always fun watching friends uh, devastate each other. So I hope uh, to see some of you guys there. Hey, I'm not dissing anyone. They're both good. I got I casted Beastrix's whole series. So I tried my best, but yeah, more fun to watch friends uh, destroy each other, in my opinion. Uh, have a great day, everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you later.